fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Grandma Prindle and her husband, Abe, maintained a little shop in Deerfoot. They sold oil, tobacco, candles, and other commodities to the neighbors who patronized the shop as often as possible. Grandma was in a rocking chair in the rear of the store when Tonto came through the door and received Abe's customary greeting. Good morning to you, Injun. Good morning. Oh. Now, can't you see any more than that? What's your name and where are you from? Reckon you're a stranger in Deerfoot, ain't you? Ah, me stranger. Uh, me, Tonto. Well, Tonto, what do you want? Uh, you got sugar? It's hey. Yes, Abe. We happen to have any sugar in stock? Can't tell just yet, Abe. Ask the redskin something more. Hmm. So you say your name's Tonto, huh? Isn't that right? Eh, uh, let me see. What do you want this sugar for? Well, me want it for friend. Want sugar for camp. Maybe some for horse. You hear that, Matilda? Yep. It's all right, Abe. We got the sugar. Let him hear what he wants. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. You'll have to get some out of the barrow in back. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You see, Tonto, my wife there, she can't see. Her eyes have gone bad. I'm sorry. And when a stranger comes in, she can tell by his voice whether he's honest or shady. I sure can. Oh, that heap good. She listens, and if she says we got what that umbre wants. Then it means he's all right and his credit is good if he ain't got the cash. But if she says he's a shady critter, then he can't get no credit. Oh, well, me pay cash. Cash? Uh huh. For land's sakes. You hear that, Matilda? Hey, you go get that sugar done up before he changes his mind. Mm, how much you want? Uh, me want five pounds. Yes, sirree. Five pounds. Cash money. Golly. So your name is Tonto, eh? That right. Hey, now, who's this? Hi. Who's running this store? I want some tobacco and I'm in a hurry. Yes, sir. I'll get it. My husband's busy, but I'll get it for you. I know just where to lay my hands. Give on me two it. plugs. You haven't been here before, uh, have what's you? What's that to you? Give me that tobacco and stop the oh, talking. I'm getting it. Just a second now. No, not there. It's on the shelf below. Oh. That's it. What's the matter with you? Oh. Well. Here's your tobacco. Thank you. Pay you next time when I'm through this way. But, mister... I said I'd pay you later. If you don't like that, just try and take that stuff away from me. Please. Goodbye. Mr. Thanks for the tobacco. You wait. Well, doggone, if it's not a redskin. 
Take your hands off me. You pay. Hey, you sure have your nerve, Redskin, talking to me that way. Now let go of my arm and stand aside before I get mad. You get mad, me get mad. Oh. Come on, let go. You're busting my arm. Nice. You pay. It. All right. All right. There's a doggone cash. Now let me go. Now, now you go. Now, I'll teach you. You drop down. Now you. Oh. Oh. Now, you go. Don't hit me again. I'll go. Uh. Just let me pick up my gun. No, you leave gun. You go. All right. All right, I'm going. Oh, gracious sakes alive, Tonto. Oh, here, gun. Oh. You take it. Well, here's your sugar, Tonto. Say, what was all that shouting I heard? What was all the noise about? Oh, hey, the crook came in and asked for some tobacco. And when I gave it to him, he wasn't going to pay for it. Huh. If it hadn't been for Tonto, he'd have stole it. Say, oh. is that so? Him leave gun. And you take it. By God. Oh, he... Abe. What? Oh. But Jilly, what's the trouble? This gun. What about it? Abe, look at it and tell me what's carved on the handle. My fingers wouldn't lie to me, but tell me. Why, what? Well, how did... Is it? Is it? But Jilly, this is good shooting I am. Oh, I knew it. Oh, I knew it's it. It's his. His initials. Here they are. Carved just like when he put them there. Our grandson... Abe, hey, how did that man get this gun? How could he get it from Kurt? Oh, do you think uh, maybe he killed him? But, Tilly, are you certain that wasn't Kurt that was in here? Oh, no, Abe, that wasn't Kurt. It wasn't our grandson. I'd know Kurt's voice anywhere, anytime. I've been hearing it, hearing it every night, singing to me, just like Kurt used to sing. Oh, I'll never forget the way he used to sing. No, Abe, that man wasn't Kurt. Then how'd that man get Kurt's gun? If we only knew. Oh, where is Kurt? What, what's he been doing all these years since, since him and me fought? Matilde, if I could only reach him and tell him to come back home, I'd be the happiest man alive. Now, uh, that gun belonged to your boy, you say? Yes, it did. These are his initials carved in it, all right. Oh, uh, maybe that man, him know where your grandson is. Oh, uh, me better go now. Uh, nice man, that Indian. Only he could oh. find Kurt for us. Uh, maybe he will be able to do something. He's out there trying to pick up the trail, it looks like. I can see him through the window. Back in the hills, the Lone Ranger waited at the camp that was well hidden in a canyon. Suddenly, he heard hoofs approaching as Tonto galloped toward him. The Lone Ranger knew that something had happened by the Indian's appearance. Hello, oh, Scott. Oh, fellow. Oh, oh fella. What is it? Oh. Uh, Kimosabe, you know a fellow by the name of Kurt Trindle? Yes, his grandparents run the general store in Deerfoot. Well, him leave home long time ago. Yes, I know. I... Heard about the trouble between Kurt and his grandfather. Well, fellow come into store, make trouble. Me take his gun. Old lady say gun belonged to Kurt. You mean he had a gun that belonged to Abe Prindle's grandson? That's right. How are Abe and his wife? Oh, woman's eyes. Not good. Her eyes were failing the last time I heard of her. Is she blind now? That's right. What a shame. She's a grand woman. Toto... Did you try to locate Kurt to the man who had the gun? Well, man, right away. Did you notice where he went? Well, Tonto trail him little way, then come here. Can you pick up the trail? Uh, me do it. Come along, then. Kurt belongs with his grandparents. They need him. Here, Silver. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Go on, Silver. Red Barton, who had lost Kurt Prindle's gun, hadn't hesitated after leaving the store. He had traveled fast and far, and the trail was much more difficult than Tonto had anticipated. It was a few days later when Barton reached a small shack near the town of Meredith. Ooh, ooh. He dismounted and went inside without bothering to rap on the door. Hi, Barton. I made a fast trip. Yeah. Well, Butch, what'd you do while I was gone? <laughs> Plenty. What? 
I've been seen to it. We can clear out Prado when we get ready to move on. What'd you learn over Deerfoot? Will that do for a hideout when we leave here? Yeah, folks over there don't ask too many questions. We can hang around there for a while without any trouble. Good enough. How much you reckon old Mosby keeps in that safe of his? Quite a bit from what I could find out. Likely a thousand anyway. You figure you can handle Kurt? I can. Where's he at? In the back room. He's waiting for you. I told him you'd be wanting to have a talk. Yes, I better see him and get him straight on things. Howdy, Kurt. See here, Martin. What kind of game are you and Butch playing? Why, well, ask him, Kurt. You curious? Yes, I am. You've been asking all kinds of questions about me ever since I lost a few dollars in that poker game. You still owe us the cash. I gave you my favorite six. Well, that wasn't I'm... enough. Now, listen, boy. Here's what we want you to do. You're working for Mosby, and that store is. Keeps a lot of cash in his safe. You're going to open that safe and bring us the cash. Like fun I am. Oh, Mr. You. Mosby's been doggone good to me, and I don't aim to double cross him. Kurt. Huh? Would you rather do like we say, or would you rather... Rather what? Mosby's going to lose what's in his safe or lose his life. Now, it's up to you. You mean... You mean if you you're... don't open the safe, we'll kill Mosby. So which way is it going to be? You open the safe and get the cash and everything will be all right. But if you're stubborn, there's likely to be shooting. I don't want Mr. Mosby killed. And do as you're told. But if I did, he'd be bound to know it was me. Nobody else has that combination but him. That's no concern of ours. He sleeps in the back of his store, doesn't he? Yes, but... There's no but about it. You wait until he's asleep tonight and then you open the safe. And if you don't, you know what'll happen. You can tell about us if you want to. Tell old Mosby you opened his safe to save his life. He'd never believe me. Well, that's too bad. You've got from now until tonight to decide if you think enough of Mosby to save his life. The town of Meredith had grown up around the Mosby Emporium. Kurt had learned to like the man he worked for, and that evening he entered the room where his employer slept. Mr. Mosby, I... I've got to speak to you. Well, go ahead, Kurt. Speak up. Don't you feel good? Oh, yes, sir. I, I feel all right. You know, I'm glad you dropped in. I wanted to talk to you for quite a spell. Uh, sit down, sir. Talk to me? That's right. I like you, Kurt. I'd like to know you better. Know more about you. You never told me anything about your home or your family. Where are they? They live in Deerfoot. Deerfoot, eh? Well, that's not so far from here. A couple of days is all. Why is it you never see them? Grandpa and I had a fight some time ago. I, I haven't been home since. Oh, that's not good, Kurt. Not good at all. I know that. You said you wanted to speak to me about something. Mr. Mosby, how much cash do you keep in your safe? Oh, I reckon there's about $1,200 there right now. Why do you ask? I... I wonder if you'd lend me that much money. $1,200? Six alive, Kurt. That's a lot of money. I know it is. Why, it's enough to buy a house. You... You fixing to get married and settle down? Well, no. Then what in tarnation... Oh, Mr. Mosby, I can't explain, but you'll have to believe me. I've just got to have that cash. Well, sounds like maybe you're in trouble. Is uh, someone suing you? No. Well, I won't ask questions where they're not wanted. I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, just give me a little time and I'll think it over. But you don't understand. Now, now, lad, nothing valuable was ever lost by taking time. I'll think it over, as I said. Well, now I reckon I'll say good night. Get mighty sleepy. Mr. Mosby, I wish I could tell you. Eh? Yeah. Tell me what? Uh, never mind. I, I guess it just wouldn't do any good. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto came to the end of their long trail at the shack where Butch and Barton stayed near the town of Meredith. It was on the evening that Kurt was to open the safe in Mosby's Emporium. Oh, Silver Hawaii, who? Trail leads to that shack, Tonto. Can't go any closer with the horses. Huh. We'll leave Silver and Scout here. You hit the ground, we'll go the rest of the way on foot. Huh. There's a light in that shack, Tonto. Someone's there. Huh. Uh, Maybe a fellow we follow. Him there. I think so. Come on. Maybe Kurt Prindle there. I certainly hope so. I... Tonto, the window on this side is open. I'm good. We can look in. That's right. As the masked man and Tonto neared the window, they saw Butch and Barton facing each other across a table in a room that was lighted by a single oil lamp. You see, big fella? Yes. See the one who made trouble in the Deerfoot store? That's right. Maybe fella with him, Kurt Prindle. Tonto, I hope not. I don't like his looks. Let's move a little closer. Perhaps we can hear what they say. Just about time. Yeah, I reckon it is. Figure Kurt will go through with it. Very well. You don't like our plans to rob old Mosby. <laughs> not that I care whether he likes him or not. Yeah, he'll do what we want, even if he does get blamed for the robbery. He knows we'll shoot Mosby if he backs out. He should know we're not bluffing. <laughs> Butch, I reckon it won't be long now that we're splitting that Mosby cash. <laughs> he won't get a cent. Why should he? Otto, did you hear that? Uh, you hear it. We'll have to act fast. Um, what do we do? I'm not sure, but first... Uh, we're going back to the horses and ride the Mosby's. Come on, we'll have to hurry. Kurt Prindle waited until he was sure his employer would be sound asleep. Then he crept through the dark emporium and crouched before the iron safe. Perspiration beaded his forehead as he worked the combination, opened the door, and removed the money. Now I have to get out of here without waking Mr. Mosby. For some reason, the elderly man was restless that night. He lay awake for some time wondering why Kurt had wanted to borrow $1,200 in cash. And then he thought he heard a sound beyond the door of his room. I wonder. He got up in the darkness and opened the door silently. Kurt's the only one who has a key to the Emporium. I... The moonlight slanting through a window fell directly on the Mosby safe, and the door of that safe stood open. <laughs> Mosby ran to the corner and crouched before his vault. Oh, the cash gone. Kurt was asking for it. He must have stolen it from me. No one else could open this box. Oh, Kurt, to think I trusted you. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were approaching the Emporium when they saw a young man run away in the moonlight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 must have been Kurt. That's right. We're too late. He's already taken the cash from the safe. You sure of that? He must have. Mosby will never believe that it was done to save his life. And now what we do? Listen to me, Toto. I have a plan. You said Barton's about as tall as I am. That's right. He's wearing dark clothes, and so am I. Um, what do you do? I'm going into that store. I'm going to take a long chance. You go for the sheriff. Tell him he's needed at Mosby's store as fast as he can get there. Tell him Mosby's been robbed. Then tell him to go to Barton's shack. Um, but you... Never mind me. Get going. Get him up, Scout. Easy, big fellow. Steady, Scout. As Tonto rode away, the Lone Ranger ran to the store, raced through the open door, and drew a gun on the old man for the safe. Hey, Mosby. You're covered. Uh, what? Hey, you not Kurt. Hardly. Was it you that robbed this safe? When I looked through the door and saw that you'd discovered your loss... I thought I'd better come back and warn you. Warn me? Yes. You report this robbery to the sheriff before daybreak. You're going to regret it. Because uh, my partner and I will come back. You, your partner? Then there's two of you. Yes, two of us. And we mean business. Now get back to your room and stay there.
Tonto went to the house of Sheriff Johnson. The lights were out, and the Indian had difficulty waking him. Oh, what's wrong? Fine time of the night to be You coming. come to Mosby's store right away. Bad trouble there. Mosby's store isn't even open this time of night. What's wrong with you waking me up? You like... get up. Come with me now. Store been robbed. Robbed? How do you know? Well, me see man come out. Him sneak out a dark store. Well, why didn't you say so? Come on in while I get my boots on. Uh, but you hurry. Now, listen. I've been sheriff in this town for nigh on to ten years. You don't have to tell me what to do. You hand me that other boot. Uh, here, boot. What did the man look like? Well, me not see good and dark. Why didn't you grab him or follow him or something? Uh, me know where him go. Him go to Breton Shack. So me come here to get you. Mm, I don't know whether to believe that story or not. You're sure you're not connected with this in some way? Well, you come to store right now. We'll go to the store, all right. I got to check up on all this you're telling me and see if there's really been a robbery. Better help me throw a saddle on my horse. We'll be there in no time. Tonto and the sheriff rode directly to the emporium. They circled the store and reined up at a door in the rear. Hey there, Mosby, open the door. Oh, Sheriff, thank goodness you're here. I didn't dare go out to get you. These are watching for me to do that. This Indian says you've been robbed. Well, I don't know how he knew it, but it's true. There were two of them. I saw one. He was masked. Me tell you where you find thief. Yeah? You know him? Uh Uh-huh. Where is the Indian? Where is he? Speak up. We'll get that cash back in a hurry. Kurt Prindle was in the shack with Butch and Barton. He handed them the stolen money. There. Now will you go away and not bother Mr. Mosby and me any longer? Maybe. You promised you would. (laughs) Maybe we'll stay around to watch you go to jail. I don't... Kurt. When the law catches you, are you going to tell them about us? You said I could. Yeah, but we've changed our minds. If you do, maybe we won't leave Mosby alone after all. Well, then I won't tell. I won't say a word. You won't have to worry at all. Just promise you'll leave him be. <laughs> sure, kid. We promise. Biden, I reckon this is just about the easiest pickings we ever found. Got your share put away? Yep. <laughs> so have I. All right, kid. I reckon it's time you cleared out of here and got... Hey, what the... Uh, crap? Mass man! <laughs> Go for your guns, and I'll let daylight show you. Why, you... Hey, Bush, look out. He's got us covered. Up with your hands. Hey, what in thunder do you want? Is this a hold-up? No. What in thunder One you... hold-up is enough for tonight. Kurt, take the guns. I don't see... Hurry up. All right. That's yours. I've got him. Shoot him, Kurt. Shoot him. He's not going to shoot the man who came here to get him out of trouble. What'd you say? Here's an extra mask. Put it on, Barton. But I don't say... You don't have to. Just do as you're told. You'll get away from me. Stand still, Barton. Very Kurt. Fasten the mask on him. Right. You'll regret this meddling. We'll see. Yeah. That mask tight? Yeah. Kurt, I know the truth about this. I know these men would have killed Mosby if you hadn't robbed the safe. I'm going to give you a chance to clear yourself and return to your grandparents and dear foot. They're waiting for you. Waiting for me? They want you and need you. But I'm a thief. I'm going to be jailed. I can't go home. Yes, you're going home. <laughs> In the meantime, Tonto went with the sheriff and Mosby to the shack. Rain up here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, 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 this is Barton's shack. <coughs> if it was him and that partner of his that robbed you, Mosby, they'll get everything they got coming to them. That's a promise. Uh, Barton was clever. If it hadn't been for the Indians seeing him, the way he disguised his voice back there at my place, I would never have suspected him. Especially masked like he was. I'll get set. We're busting in sudden. Heist your hands, you crooks. The sheriff, wait. Kurt hasn't covered. Sheriff, Mr. Mosby. The law. That's the man who came to my office. That's Barton. He still got his mask on. I wasn't near your place. Hey, wait, listen. Both of you shut up or I'll fix you so you can't talk. Sheriff, you'll find all the stolen cash in their pockets. That'll send them to jail for a good long spell. Uh, no, we've been framed. Sure Didn't we you fellas framed. hear me? I told you to shut up. Now be quiet. That's better. Now, March, you're heading for the jail. I don't Not you, Kurt. The sheriff can handle them. You stay here and tell me all about it. It was several evenings later at the store in Deerfoot. Matilde, 
Yes, Abe. You know how sometimes you told me it seemed that Kurt was real near to you, even if he wasn't? I mean, uh, oh, you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Well, tonight? Yes? I feel the same way. I don't know how to explain it, but I've been thinking about Kurt the whole evening. So have I, Abe. So have I. And I think that... But, Teddy, what? what's that? You hear it? Hear what? That whistling. Huh? And the tune he's whistling. That was always Kurt's favorite tune. And he's whistling it just like Kurt always did. I'm going to see what's outside. Abe, you're just imagining things. It's a stranger, it must be. That couldn't be our grandson after all this time. I can't help it, Matindi. I've got to find out. Who? Oh, Kurt. Kurt. Grandpa. Kurt, oh, Kurt. Grandpa, I've come back. I've come back home and oh. I've come back to stay. Oh, Kurt. <laughs> This is the happiest day of my life. Mine, too. Uh, as long as I live, I'm going to thank the man that made it possible. Who do you mean, Kurt? Well, he, he somehow found out that you were willing to let me come home and have another chance. Gramps, you've got my word for it. I'm through with gambling. I, Well, I, I had a debt that was just too much to pay until the masked man helped me out. What masked man, Kurt? Well... Mr. Mosby called him the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>